If any modification is unacceptable to you, your only recourse is to discontinue use of the services and send us a notice of termination. <laughs> CD Baby Terms of Service. Now what they call this is the CD Baby Artist Agreement. And if you remember, because we have now gone through a few other music distributors terms of service, the last one was DistroKit. My goal as I am going through this is to point out all the things I think you should know. I do this for clients so that you don't have to read. In this case, it's 21 pages. So you don't have to read the 21 pages and I can just brief you and I can be like, hey, if you happen to be using CD Baby, here's some things you need to know. And a part of our investigation on this is in regards to your royalties. It's in regards to things like control. Can CD Baby just take your royalties if they decide for any reason? And what spawned a lot of this was, of course, our dispute with TuneCore, taking a look at their terms of service, the back and forth, the threats of litigation, the threats of class action lawsuits, and basically what we had discovered in their terms, which we found to be unlawful. And so those are the things we're thinking about as we go through today, CD Baby's terms a service. All right, with that being said, let me share my screen. So here in the beginning, one of our favorite things to do is say, when was it last updated? This is actually from their website. Okay, I've just copied and pasted it here, but they last updated August 9th. The reason why we kind of care about that and give it two seconds of mention is because we're always like, when was the last time you had a problem with someone? Because that's always when they update these terms. It's when they had a problem, when they got a threat of something. And with TuneCore, they happened to update their terms of service not too long, maybe like 10 days after we sent our big demand letter. So we were just kind of making note of that. But anyway, so August 9th, 2023, it hasn't been too long. I just wanted to point this out because they go, look, this is the CD Baby Artist Agreement. If you choose to use any of our other services, okay, so other services being things like we do registering with the Mechanical Licensing Collective, right? That's what that MLC is for. We can register your stuff on Sound Exchange. We can monetize your stuff, right, on YouTube. We can do your publishing. And the reason I just want to point this out for two seconds is that I'm glad if a music distributor offers these kinds of services and you find them helpful and you just do it. But please do this stuff yourself because as soon as you just sign up and you're like, yeah, I'll go and register my music on Sound Exchange, they're taking a cut. And there's no reason for you to give up a share of your income unnecessarily. So just a note on that, okay? This agreement, because this is a contract that you are signing. When accepted, after you click, I agree, will create a binding and legally enforceable contract between you and us. Whether you are acting in your individual capacity or as the authorized representative of an artist, band, group, or corporation. Okay, I just wanna make a little note on that. I'm the lawyer here. And what I can at least say is where they're like, you're signing this and just so you know, you're signing it on behalf of your whole band, yes. That might be the case, but just so you know, that may not be legally binding. If you're in the band and like John signed this and put your music up and you'd like never said it was okay. And all of a sudden you're bound to terms of service. That's not quite how contract law works. You are not bound to something unless you personally agree to it. So I'm just pointing that out because I'm like, hmm, a part of me is like, as I'm reviewing these, I'm like, how would I revise these if I was like CD Baby's attorney? Section two, you hereby authorize us to, as your you know representatives, on a non-exclusive basis. Okay, so we were talking about with the DistroKid Terms of Service that they are also non-exclusive, which means that you could put your music not just on CD Baby, but you could put that same music on a different distributor. Practically speaking, please don't use the same ISRC numbers because if you distribute the same music on two different platforms, it creates conflicts on Spotify, on music platforms, and then it's just gonna be a massive nightmare. So that's what you need to do to avoid the issue. But the way you can use this that I love is that if you want to have your album on CD Baby, but then for whatever reason, you want to drop an EP that contains some of the songs from the album or singles from the album, you could distribute those on the secondary distributor. So because it's non-exclusive, we like that. We also like to do a distro kit. You also give CD Baby the right to reproduce and create derivative work. So if you remember, if you distribute the song to YouTube, they create a video version with like your cover art. So that's, that's what that is. A derivative work is something based on your song. Now you also give them the right to do synchronization. If you guys remember here at the tippy top, I think it was, so one of the deals is that they have the sync distribution addendum. So these are all the additional contracts 
that are referenced and included that you are technically agreeing to. So that's why like most people, it's not even that you failed to click the terms of service and read it. It's like within it, there's 14 other contracts where they're like, you know, if you agree to this, you also agree to that. It's a mild nightmare, which is why I'm here to help you. But in any case, um, one of my clients was like, hey, I got a statement and CD Baby said that I had revenue from a sync placement. He's like, I didn't even know. So anyway, you know, if you get a sync placement, meaning you get a placement in TV, film or games, cool. You typically do need to opt into that. So just be careful of like what you're clicking around when you upload music. Section three, term. We are on a mission. We're looking primarily for stuff in regards to your royalties, but we're pointing out things as we go along. Section three, the term of the agreement will be effective on the effective date. So this is the, the date that you clicked the I accept button and it will continue unless and until terminated by either you or us. This is different. So with DistroKid, it was a year. You sign up, you're not exclusive and it's for a year. And I'm like, hmm, that's kind of weird because you can just take down your music and take it elsewhere. It's not exclusive. How does it even apply? Here on CD Baby, they're like, it's in perpetuity. It just goes on and on and on and on. And I don't mind that because in practical effect, these other distributors like it's a year, but then it automatically renews if you don't terminate. And then what happens is that you forget like where your stuff is, you lose your account credentials. And so like in practical effect, it pretty much is in perpetuity when you upload somewhere. Not that's how you should do things. You gotta be more organized than that. But anyway, they just go, you have to actually send us notice of termination. So if you are interested in getting your stuff off of CD Baby, this is how you do it. All you gotta do is send them an email to notice at cdbaby.com. Here's the stuff. They want your username, your email associated with your account, the title of the album, and the services that you are terminating. Three C is in cat, CD Baby may at any time in its sole discretion with or without notice to you. Suspend or limit your access or to use your services and or suspend or limit the access to your account. Okay, this is the first time we're seeing any kind of mention in regards to them just kind of kicking you out. This is a problem that we have with music distributors when they are taking control of your music, kicking you out of your account, freezing your royalties, or in the case of TuneCore, forfeiting your royalties altogether or giving it to a third party if they so choose. So this says here, we're not at royalties yet, but like all the other terms that we have read thus far, they reserve the right to do whatever it is that they want, including to kick you off their platform. Section four, payments. You will also be subject to additional setup fees, charges as more explained on the CD Baby website. So obviously, you know, take a look, make sure you know what you're signing up for, make sure you know what you're paying. These may be updated from time to time. You are responsible for reviewing those fees and charges. I really don't like that. That's so annoying to me. I get why they do it. And typically they'll send an email and they're like, hey, we're updating our terms of service. Like try to read that when you get those emails because they'll be like, hey, just so you know, we're updating the annual fee, you know, for subscription. We're updating it by $70, literally an email that I got. They let me know technically. <laughs> anyway, moving on. This is in payments to you, little b, licensee. Records, C Baby may, but need not audit the books and records of licensee. So like Spotify. So when it comes to Spotify's records and CD Baby may accept any representations made in a licensee account statement delivered to CD Baby as true and complete. And the reason why I note that is because I've had clients who are like, Crystal, I got a uh, hundred thousand plays on this song and my distributor didn't pay me for that, but it's showing that I got them on Spotify. So there's a disconnect. And so then we have to kind of go down the rabbit hole to figure out, because you know, we're talking to both the distributor, we're talking to Spotify. And so what CD Baby is saying is that it's going to rely on whatever the music platform, the DSP, tells it. Is that reasonable? Is it not? Offsets. You hereby authorize CD Baby to offset, uh-oh, offset as in money. So to offset amounts owed to you pursuant to this agreement, any amounts that you may owe to CD Baby, whether under an indemnification provision or costs, expenses, taxes, and deductions authorized in this agreement. All right, this is the first mention of them doing something in regards to monies that are in your account. Now, nothing too inflammatory here. They're just like, look, if something comes up, we get sued because of something that you did. We do reserve the right to offset with your royalties. Okay, we made a note. All right, so record keeping, guys. This is something that is super important for CD Baby that I'm about to talk about, but it also affects a lot of contracts that you will do throughout your music career and really all contracts, which is record keeping and auditing. So let me show you what they have to say about this. So here you can do an audit. So you can go in and you can look at our books. If you think that there's been some funny business, you can hire a CPA, a certified public accountant, and you can pay that person 
one time per year to go in and look at your statements. And sometimes we, not sometimes, many a times we have to do this in cases of like record labels because they're infamous for under accounting and under reporting. And so we have to hire someone to go and actually look at the books to see like what's what. So the reason why I'm pointing this out is because A, you wanna make sure you have something in your contract that says that you get to go and look at the books. But then B, this is where they get a little bit sneaky. So they go, if you wanna do an audit, you gotta give us 30 days notice. But objections to accounting. If you have any objection to a CD Baby accounting statement made available to you, so saying, hey, Paul, you made $500 this quarter, okay? So that's what these statements said. And Paul's like, I didn't make 500, I should have made like 2000. You agree that you shall give us specific notice of that objection. So you have to say something, right? So remember above, we said notices at, what is it, cdbaby.com you know, for the email, including a copy of your CPA's analysis of the accounting statement and your reason within 18 months after the date we send or make the statement available to you. Each statement shall become conclusively binding conclusively binding on you at the end of the 18 month period. The reason why we care about that is because they go, there's a statute of limitations. There's a certain time from when we generate the statement and make it available to you, whether you go and look at it or not. And I know that most of you are not going and looking at these statements, right? So you might get an email being like, hey, you met the threshold for your CD Baby account and we just paid you $500. We paid you $25, like whatever it is. And you're like, oh, cool. And you don't think twice about it. You're not actually looking at the statements yourself because that means you have to log in and download and it's like all these steps. But the reason why this can kick, you know, kick you in the butt, be painful, be no good, is that they're saying within 18 months, if you don't do anything, it cuts off your ability to do anything. So this is the way that they limit any potential liability or headache because if you wait too long and you're like, oh my God, I think you underpaid me. You literally can't say anything about it because you signed a contract. That said, you can't say anything about it. Okay. So they go, all right, all right. Paul saw his statement. He, you know, found something kind of wonky. He hired a CPA. We did an audit. And if Paul's CPA determines there was an underpayment, CD Baby says that they will pay you a late fee of one half percent for the unpaid royalties. Okay. So, I mean, you know, there's a penalty in here. They have to pay something. Now, where I'm going to show you guys, this literally like is nonsense, comes up next. The scope of the proceeding, if there is any proceeding, shall solely be, if you sue, that's what this means. If you sue, the ability of what you can talk about in the lawsuit is, is solely about the royalties. And it's for the accounting periods that you did the audit for. The court shall have no authority to consider any other issues or awards or relief other than related to the royalties. And so as a litigation attorney, I can tell you, the reason why we care about this is because there's usually not just one issue. It's usually not just about the royalties. There's usually multiple things that happened. There might be like defamation, there's breach of contract other than just the royalties. There's a lot of nonsense that we have to deal with. And so what they do there, kind of sneaky, is that they go, if you do sue us, it's only about this one thing. You can't sue us for anything else. So you kind of unintentionally just waived all those claims. So that's why we look at these accounting provisions carefully. And since you have zero right to negotiate any of this, you are agreeing to it if you distribute your music through their platform. Payment terms. CD Baby will use commercially reasonable efforts to make a payment to you for amounts generated, actually received, no later than 15 days after your threshold amount. So in CD Baby, I can just speak from experience. I was with them for a very long time. In your account, you can say what the threshold amount was. I did like $25. <laughs> if it hasn't made $25, eh, whatever. And so they go, when you hit that threshold, no later than 15 days, they'll do a payout to you. And I do, you know, I like the fact that they at least pay you automatically because certain distributors make you have to request your money, which I just think is annoying. I don't know what Symphonic does now today. When I was with them several years ago, you had to actually request to be paid. I'm like, why am I having to request? Like, I got the money. Just pay me when it comes in. CD Baby reserves the right to take actions available to it in regards to a dispute with any licensee. Nothing in this agreement or any applicable agenda obligates CD Baby to collect any amounts do it by a licensee or to initiate any cause of action to a licensee for non-payment. Okay, so basically it's just saying in regards to Spotify not paying you. So in my example, I made it, you know, I had 100,000 legitimate streams on Spotify for whatever reason they didn't pay. CD Baby is just saying, I'm not going to go to bat to you or, you know, on your behalf, I'm not going to sue them. I'm not going to whatever. So they're protecting themselves. Will they anyway? I don't know. 
All accountings rendered and payments made by CD Baby 2 shall be binding upon you and not subject to any objection for any reason, unless specific objection in writing stating the basis thereof is given to CD Baby within one year from the date rendered. When I review terms of service, usually, especially if it's for like a company, I'll be reviewing them for just consistency because, you know, if we're trying to protect the company, we gotta make sure like their stuff is consistent. So what we just read together is that they initially said, they're like, well, it's 18 months. 18 months after you get the statement, you have the ability to object. And if you don't, statute of limitations, you waive those objections, blah, 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 blah. And then what we just read right there, it just said, you have one year from actually getting the statement or when it's rendered. Clarify, when it's rendered. So they'll render it and put it in your account and you're not like going and downloading stuff. So it's like it was sent to you, okay? So when it was rendered, it was put in the account. It's actually just 12 months. So they just shaved off a couple months there, right? So we have some inconsistent language and the way that we deal with that, if we do have to go sue, is that we're just gonna, you know, usually if you're like a past the one year, we're gonna argue and be like, no, it says 18 months. Oh, and then it gets gray. And then it's just like, well, was it the one year? Was it the 18 months? And then we have to spend like $5,000 litigating over which period of time controls in the contract because it's just inconsistent. So setting that aside, I'm just making, I'm making notes of what I need to tell CD Baby they need to fix. All right, number five, your obligations. You, and we covered this in the DistroKid terms. Here are the things that you are agreeing which is you have the right to do all this stuff. You own the content. You will pay all the royalties. You'll pay mechanical royalties. You'll do all this stuff that you are required to do for your own music. That's totally fair. I wanted to point this out, the parental advisory labeling. I don't know if you guys know this because I didn't really learn it until like way later in my career, but you know that parental advisory that will go on the CD if there's like cursy words and, <laughs> you know, naughty things in there. You're supposed to license that and you go to, it's the Recording Industry Associations of America, RIAA. You go to their website and you license that image to put it on your cover art. Because a lot of people just do it. And most people don't know that you have to actually get a license. It's pretty easy. I went through the process. It's nothing too crazy. But anyway, I just wanted to share with you in case you didn't know that. Back to the terms. Right of withdrawal. Number six. This is if you want to terminate. And there's some practical stuff you guys need to keep in mind with this. So if you want to take your music off of the platform, we established this is non-exclusive. You can terminate at any time, which we kind of love, right? It's not even saying that it for sure is a year or two years or whatever. You can terminate whenever. So upon receipt of your notice of withdrawal, okay, so you have to still send that email saying all the things that they asked, they, they said that you said. Within five days, they're going to let the DSPs know and they'll start pulling down the music. Now, practically speaking, because I did pull my music off of CD Baby, it was more like 30 days where they're like, okay, now it should be officially down, but give like 30 days for processing. I just want to mention this. If you migrate your catalog in part, in full, you need to make sure you give time for it to fully come down. And what I mean by that is if you're like, I'm going to go with Symphonic. And so you send your notice and then like five days lapse. And so before that full 30 days happens, you go and redistribute your music with the same ISRC numbers and all this stuff. And now there's two versions of your music on DSPs or they just reject all of it because they're like, ah, I don't know what to do with any of this. You gotta actually wait, okay? So you gotta take it down, give it a little breath, you know what I'm saying? And then re-upload. And what we do for like, you know, our big clients, our, you know, our, our big huge catalogs that are making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month is that we try to coordinate it with the distributors and so we're like we want zero interruption in service because that is what happens it has to come down for it to then go up without you know conflicts anyway a you got to do it but b depending on the distributor you know with like the, the one that i use i just talked to them i was like hey this is the timing they said so can you keep an eye on it and so we were just trying to like coordinate it so there was zero interruption in the service the moral of the story that i'm trying to share is just make sure it's fully down before you re-upload the music elsewhere you shall remain solely responsible for enforcing the removal of your content from licensees' websites. This made me laugh. I'm like, what are you talking about? Are you saying that if my stuff is still on Spotify, I have to go and talk to Spotify about it? I mean, that is what it's saying. Now, I hope CD Baby, if someone has a problem, they reach out, CD Baby will try to help them, this and that, but the contract literally says, like, it's on you. So that's why I wanted to point that out. Section nine, modification, termination, and effective termination. Now we're not coming up, just like with DistroKid, we haven't come up yet on the money portion that we really care about, which is this whole forfeiture of royalties. You know, are they doing the same thing that TuneCore is doing? We're not there yet. I'm always curious. I'm like, why do you just put it so deep into the contract? We're literally on the eighth page now and we still haven't gotten really to the money part. Anyway, so section nine, we reserve the right to change, modify, add to, or remove all or part of this agreement in our sole discretion. 
at any time from time to time. All right, so like we can change this without your authorization. If any modification is unacceptable to you, I love this so much. If any modification is unacceptable to you, your only resource is to, or recourse, excuse me, your only recourse is to discontinue use of the services and send us a notice of termination. I don't mind when they just say it, you know what I'm saying? But I mean, that is the truth. And that's what I'm pointing out to you guys. I go, you just have to understand that when you agree to use these middlemen, because you have to, you have no choice. If you want your music on music platforms, you have zero negotiation power. You're being forced to sign this agreement. Understand that they can also change the terms of the agreement later on. So you gotta, you know, pay attention to that, right? A Music Attorney is your number one legal resource for artists, producers, and record labels. Get contract templates, one-on-one -on -one legal advice, free master classes, and everything you need for your music business. Go to tommusicattorney.com. All right, section. 10, removal of your content from the websites. CD Baby reserves the right and its sole and absolute discretion to remove your music from services for any reason. They also give some reasons if it's patently offensive, pornographic, defamatory, if it's subject to a dispute between you, us, or third party, if the content, you cannot document your rights. This is important because sometimes, you know, clients have had issues and they're like, you know, Paul, Paul's working with me, Chris, right? And we did a song together and maybe like a lot of artists, we didn't get a contract into place, which is just terrible. Please don't do that. And then we have an issue with like a distributor and they go, you need to show that you own the rights to the song and you don't have a contract. So you're just creating issues for you, not only at the level with the actual producer. So Paul and I, if we have a dispute, like there's no clarity, there was no contract, but then we have nothing that we can send to a third party like CD Baby to prove what our agreement was. So for all those reasons, you definitely wanna get contract templates. We may remove your content from services in our reasonable business judgment if we suspect that your music or account has been subject to and or involved in fraudulent activities. Okay, and then this part, tell me what you guys think about this. They go, also, if you are abusive or rude, or provide false or intentionally misleading information to any CD Baby employees or agents, they reserve the right to take your music down and kick you out. Anyway, so that last piece, I literally have not read that before for a company's terms to a degree. I mean, if someone's being rude or abusive to their employees, you know, I get it, that's, that's nice for them to put in there. But what we're really trying to look at though is the basis that they give for removal of your music, which is anything, they do give a list. And they use words like for infringement of intellectual property. And it's not defined terms for defamation, right? For stuff that's pornographic. These aren't defined terms. What does that mean? Kind of going back to the TuneCore situation where we had TuneCore saying that, you know, our artist isn't a real artist because they thought his music was trash. And they thought what he did was terrible. It was just the, it's the most bizarre thing, especially when we're just trying to get him paid his lawfully earned royalties. But the consistent line through all of these terms of service for these distributors is that they just reserve the right to kick you out. And we don't even necessarily have a problem with that. You know what I'm saying? It's a private company if they want to kick you off their platform for whatever reason. But when it comes to them keeping your royalties, which is what we're going to get into, next. In blue to indicate importance, CD Baby reserves the right to suspend the payment of any funds payable to you hereunder and to block your ability to otherwise withdraw funds from your account until satisfactory resolution and or explanation of the suspect activities is obtained. So they go, we're gonna put a pause on this and it could be indefinitely if there's some suspicious stuff happening. Any costs incurred by CD Baby, including legal fees and costs in connection therewith may, in addition to its other remedies, be deducted, taken from your account and your monies otherwise payable to you by CD Baby. CD Baby's licensees may also have policies. So a licensee again being Spotify, CD Baby's licensees may also have policies related to fraud and suspected fraudulent activities. And you agree that such policies shall be binding upon you hereafter. So, you know, they're like, we can take from your royalties to pay are attorney's fees and costs. What we kind of talked about for distro kid terms, that's what they said as well. Again, I don't mind that so much because in the instance of like a real thing, you really did engage in streaming fraud. As you guys know, you can get sanctioned for that now by Spotify. And as the distributor, the distributor can get sanctioned for that as well, whether they knew about it or not. And so I'm just like, if there really were things that happened because of your bad acts, I understand why a company would say we need to be able to reimburse ourselves which is different than just like, we're just gonna take all your money for whatever reason. No, 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 if you are reimbursing for actual damages that can be proven, that's different. 
So that's what they're saying right here. And then also, you know, to the extent they're like, you need to abide by Spotify's policies and stuff like that, you know, you are, right? I, I, I don't mind that. CD Baby may, in its sole discretion, provide you a refund for any fees previously paid by you for making your content available via our services. The removal, and this is important people, the removal of any of your content, your music, shall not relieve CD Baby of the obligation to pay you any royalties that may have otherwise accrued prior to the removal of your content, AKA your music. So far, I'm loving this. What? So they're saying we're committing via this contract that we don't have a right to not pay you. We have to pay you your royalties that were accrued, even if your music gets taken down, even if we kick you off of our platform. I'm like, oh my gosh, CD Baby, the hero. This isn't the end of the sentence though, except that CD Baby will not be obligated to pay you any royalties that CD Baby deems in its reasonable business judgment to have been accrued through the fraudulent or abusive exploitation of your content. Lowercase words, people, fraudulent or abusive exploitation. What does that mean? Okay. And as again, a litigation attorney, if I was like going to sue one of these distributors on your behalf and I go, this stuff happened, this stuff, we don't think rises to the level of fraudulent or abusive exploitation. And they're like, yes, it does. There's no definition in this contract of what that means, which makes this exponentially more difficult to deal with on your behalf. However, the one thing that I do like about this is that they do say that CD Baby in its reasonable business judgment, which are words that have legal connotations to them, you know, back to the TuneCore situation, not to harp on it, but if they're claiming that in their reasonable business judgment, it was allegedly our client had engaged in streaming fraud and then apparently became an ethical issue. And they're like, he's a trash musician, terrible music. He's a scumbag, their words, not mine. Well, then if we did sue them, we go, your honor, this is not based on reasonable business judgment of a company. This is actually quite skewed. This is actually quite biased. So things like wording like that is really important. So, you know, at the end of the day, what does this say? It started so good. And it was like, we understand we're going to keep paying you, kick you off the platform, whatever, we're going to pay you. But they do give themselves this little out, which is accept in our reasonable business judgment. If we think that you've engaged in fraudulent or abusive exploitation of your content, we're not going to pay you. Now, it doesn't blatantly say how TuneCore has it, where it says you forfeit your royalties. We can give your royalties to third parties or keep it for ourselves. So it's not that aggressive, but it does give them a little bit of an out. So no termination due to removal. If they take your stuff off of music platforms, this is what it says. They go, the agreement is still not terminated. So if, if, if they kick you out, you still have to send that notice of termination. So make sure you do that. Okay. Because that could certainly have implications moving on. So they have, you know, additional stuff, warranties, reps. This is where it gets into. All right. So let's say there is a, is a bad situation and we have to sue. This is the additional stuff that you guys need to know in the reps and warranties. Each party represents that they will not act in any manner that conflicts or interferes with any existing commitment or obligation of another party, and that no agreement previously entered into by the party will interfere with the performance of this agreement. Okay, we don't have a problem with that. You hereby, you hereby warrant to CD Baby that you have the full right, power, authority to act on behalf of any and all owners of any right, title, interest in your music. So back to the beginning, you remember? They were like, hey, you're entering into this contract on behalf of yourself, the bands that you represent, whatever. And they give that list. And so they're having you reaffirm that it's all good to go. And so when you guys don't do contracts and you don't have clarity, and then someone in the band who maybe did help to write the music becomes disenfranchised and he's leaving the band and he hates your guts and he's going to be like, I don't have, you know, I didn't give you permission to have the music up. And so now he's going to reach out to CD Baby and tell them this whole story. And you're like, dude. What our agreement was that we it was cool, we were going to do this, and you don't have any contract to back it up. And so all of a sudden now, you are definitely going to be into trouble <laughs> with CD Baby, as well as the drummer, right? So when you have people in the band who become disenfranchised, you really expose yourself to problems because you didn't get a, a band agreement. You didn't get an operating agreement. Like, this is stuff that's just going to save you time, money, and a headache. All right, moving on. So 16, indemnification. Just wanted to point this out. Indemnification should be in all your contracts forever and ever. And it usually should be mutual right here is one-sided in CD Baby's favor, which it says, you agree to indemnify, defend, and hold harmless CD Baby from lawsuits and bad things that you did. 
So the reason why we usually want this to be mutual is that like, hey, you know, CD Baby, maybe CD Baby does something bad and they get you sued. Could happen. You actually don't have that protection pursuant to this, but CD Baby does. So again, drummer situation, drummer then goes, sues you, also names CD Baby. And so CD Baby using this will go, hey, you guys have to pay for this litigation and you need to defend and you need to do all the things. So this is what they do to actually protect themselves. And this is normal. This is template language, I would say, boilerplate language. They you know, specify here, they go, if we have to say, hey, you need to come and defend and dispose of this, the settlement of the entire dispute, you can do so, but you gotta let us know. You can't admit that we did anything. So it gives you, you know, lots of specifications here. In the limitation of liability, please pay attention to this. This is a thing where it comes to like me fighting over like one word. <laughs> this is an example. So with a lot of companies, they do a limitation of liability. And so they go, CD Baby will not be liable for, and they give a little list for special, incidental, consequential, or punitive damages. And so they get you to sign this and you did sign it because you clicked the button. And so what it says is if you have real damages, because let's think of an example, they kicked you out of the account, they didn't pay your royalties, it was based on false claims, whatever, and you do end up suing them, what they're saying is that you can only seek your actual damages because under the law, the law actually gives us the ability to seek additional stuff. It's not just the $10,000 that you didn't get paid. We can go and say, no, Paul needs to be paid and reimburse his attorney's fees, which would be consequential damages. His attorney's fees, because his music was down, he lost another $5,000 in royalties. Like all this nonsense happened because of these bad acts by CD Baby. And so by having these words in here, we cannot get your attorney's fees. We cannot get punitive damages, which can sometimes be two or three times your actual damages because the court wants to make an example of them. So I will go to war to get these words taken out or at a minimum this word, consequential, because like, oh, that's just stupid. If we have to sue you because you do something, it's over $10,000 and my client ends up paying me 50 over a year to litigate this and I win, which I will, my client is entitled to the $10,000 plus the $50,000 that they had to pay me to sue you. So we're just making notes because we don't get to negotiate any of this stuff, but you guys can at least keep this in mind for your future contracts. CD Baby shall also not be liable for any royalties, fees, payments, or damages arising out of the failure of any licensee to pay CD Baby again. You know, if Spotify doesn't pay them, whatever, they're like, that's your problem. CD Baby's total liability to you for any breach. Ah, this. CD Baby's total liability to you for any breach of this agreement shall be in all instances limited to the amount of monies actually paid to you. This is where they get you. I also fight about just limitations of liability language in these contracts. I just like go to war. I'm like, no. And it's because like, if you only got paid again, the $10,000 or even it's less, it, the actual monies that you were paid sets the bar of how much you can get from them. So they've already limited. They're like, you don't get to sue us for like consequential damages. You don't get your attorney's fees. You don't get, you know, punies, nothing. And whatever monies you actually earned through us, which might be really minimal, that's the cap. Even if your actual damages were like up here, we're gonna cap you right here. So, you know, from the standpoint of like being CD Baby's attorney, if I was, this is great for them because it really limits how much like they have to pay out. And I'm sure they, you know, they deal with a lot of claims and a lot of lawsuits and all that stuff. So it's great for them. Not so great for you. All right. So limitations of liability and then also dispute resolution. They have mandatory arbitration in here. And there's a couple of things that I just like, you know, arbitration is more of an informal lawsuit in court. This is true. When you, you know, file a lawsuit in a real court of law, we file, we're in front of a judge, all this stuff. Arbitration is similar in that there's a complaint, an answer, some discovery, a hearing, but it's very informal. So instead of being in a court, for example, we might be in like a conference room. And I had this crazy experience where we had the arbitration in my law office's conference room. And like, it was just insane. But the bathroom that is outside near the conference room flooded, just so happened to flood in the middle of the arbitration. And obviously just like flooded into the room and all this stuff. And so we went across the street to a hotel because we couldn't, we couldn't not proceed. There was a lot of money, the arbitrator was there and all stuff, court reporter. And so we went into the hotel and it was amazing because this hotel was very like, not futuristic, you know what I'm saying? But it was like hip, you know, a hip, cool kind of hotel. And we got a room and in the room there was naked 
people, just lovely artistic, you know, portraits. So anyway, we had the arbitration, we finished in that room. Anyway, so the point just being that it's, it's less formal. When you conclude the arbitrator who's acting as the judge, the arbitrator makes a ruling and then the parties have to abide by that. And so the reason why, you know, companies love arbitration is because it's less formal, there's less money involved, it's faster. And the reason why I can't stand arbitration is because often you're dealing with people who are not as good as judges. They don't get it, they make mistakes, they don't know what the hell's going on. And so it's just frustrating sometimes for just, you know, making sure you have the right outcome based on, you know, what really happened. Anyway, this is my other thing. So you remember with the TuneCore situation, we had talked about, you know, potentially filing a class action because so many of you had kind of come forward and you're like, ah, oh, I'm dealing with these issues too. And we had even threatened it <laughs> in our final letter and our complaint that we sent to TuneCore. This is kind of why I'm inspired to go and actually do a full in-depth review of the TuneCore Terms of Service. But anyway, right now we're talking about CD Baby. So here they have a provision about class actions. You and CD Baby agree that you and CD Baby may bring claims against the other in an individual capacity and not as a plaintiff or class member in any purported class or representative proceeding. All right, so they got you again. And they're like, even if there was a situation and you wanted to bring a lawsuit on behalf of a class and to get that class certification, you can't because you already signed the contract saying you waived the right to any class actions. Last couple of things, you know, they, in every contract, including this one, they set forth what state's law applies. And here we have Oregon, just, just so you know, because it's like, if there's arbitration, you got to go there. You got to hire an attorney in that state. Claims you and CD Baby agree, notwithstanding any other rights to the party, may have under the law or equity, any cause of action arising out of relating to this agreement, the services, your use of the website, excluding a claim for indemnification, must commence, listen up people, must commence within one year after the cause of action accrues. <gasps> They got you again. Once again, on page 17, at the very end of that long sentence, they put in another statute of limitations. At the time, a cause of action accrues, meaning you find out whatever. Maybe it wasn't even a royalties issue. I don't know. Maybe some CD Baby representative like defamed you. It's like, ah, look at this loser fraudster and, and, and their crappy music and who knows. But whatever the claim might be, they're saying that once you have discovery of it, you have one year to actually bring a claim. And if you don't, you waive those rights. And in fact, it says otherwise, such cause of action is permanently barred. All claims brought contrary to this dispute resolution section shall be considered improperly filed. So meaning if you actually file a lawsuit in a different state, if you don't go through the arbitration process, should you file a claim contrary to this dispute resolution section, CD Baby may recover its attorney's fees and costs up to $5,000 and they would do that if, for example, you, you know, failed to withdraw your complaint. If you are going to file a lawsuit, initiate an arbitration, most law offices take a minimum retainer of $5,000. It's a very expensive process. And that's why I just get really peeved when I have these limitation of liability sections in these contracts. Because I'm like, in order for you to even, if they did steal your money, if they did underpay you, the reality is that for you to initiate a lawsuit, you're paying out the nose. And then here it's like, well, if you are going to sue us, the most that you can sue us for is the amount that you earned and you can't even get your attorney's fees. So it makes it practically impossible for you to get a remedy if one of these distributors does something to you. And that's why I'm looking at these terms of service. And that's why I'm really annoyed a lot of these companies. All right, last couple of things here uh, at the end of the agreement, entire agreement. This is the entire agreement. So all of the, you know, the terms of service and all the stuff it linked to. So just meaning you are signing a contract. I mean, they just keep saying it over and over. A waiver by either party, and this is important, a waiver by either party to any term or condition of this agreement will not be deemed or construed as a waiver of such term or condition or any subsequent breach thereof. I generally love waiver provisions. And it's because what, what it does is that if you do something naughty and they don't make a problem of it right now, they can make a problem of it later. So them not doing anything about it does not alleviate them making a claim. Generally, I love this because it, it ends up playing out really well for our clients in different situations and, and even in one of my litigation cases right now. It could be the difference of like millions of dollars. Caveat. On this and the TuneCore situation, 
one of the communications that we got back was something to this effect. And this was the one where they were like threatening me, you know, and they're like, we see that you're you know, talking about this dispute and you're, you know, saying stuff that's not true, which is not true. But in any case, they were just like, if you actually file this lawsuit, we're going to counter sue your artist and we're going to seek these other claims having to do with back performance, old stuff. This is how a company would be able to do that. Because again, we haven't gone through the entire terms of service for TuneCore. Likely they have something like that in here. And so they go, for example, if we think that there was naughty conduct and you know fraudulent activity previously, we're going to go after you for that. So anyway, this stuff is interesting as far as how you like practically play it out. I think this is like literally the last thing. So uh, no, no third party beneficiaries. This is stupid and it conflicts because they go, the only people who are bound to this contract are the people who signed it. And remember in the agreement, you know, in the, be in the beginning, they're like, hey, you're signing this on behalf of you and the band and other people who aren't signing this. So that conflicts. We also have the issue of just a conflict on the, on the statute of limitations, on the accounting. They're like saying 18 months in one instance, they're saying 12 months in another instance. So it just, you know, there's inconsistencies. Also just know CD Baby can assign this if they sell, if they sell to another company. So you could be, you know, in contract with someone else without even knowing it. You have no obligation to assign this whatsoever. And last but not least, because I love to just make these distributors mad at me, I did this for DistroKid and I gave you guys the actual notice information, contact information, if you ever needed to reach out to them, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing right here for CD Baby. This was in a different document. This was in what they call their terms of service, which is more of just like, you know, you agree to abide by our website rules and stuff like that. But anyway, so in section eight, they use the same email for notices, which is, where is it, where is it, where is it? Notices at CD Baby. Dot com, but here's the address and I'll make sure that you can download this as well. If you want to go back through, use this information. Okay. So where do we go from here? Well, as I continue to kind of go through, this has just been, this has been super interesting for me because I've just read like so many terms of service. Cause these are just all contracts and seeing how they work. And also, you know, it, it's not a problem until it's affected you. And that's kind of what I said with TuneCore. I'm like, there's a lot of people who, who likely had a great experience with TuneCore and they never had to be in the situation where there was some allegation of something like copyright infringement or trademark infringement or whatever. And then what comes into play is the contract at that point. And so I just go, because music distributors are forced middlemen, we do not have an option to not use them. In the instance, we want our music on music platforms. That's why I have a problem with terms that are a little sharky. And that's saying it nicely. So it opens up the conversation in regards to direct to consumer, selling your stuff directly through your website, maybe even taking your music off of streaming platforms, regardless of where you sit on it, drop a comment down below and I'll see you on the next one.